Hey guys, here is just a couple terms we want to introduce to you so that you understand the lab that we're getting ready to do. Um, these are just some basic definitions. Some of the words you will recognize because we've used them previously this year and other words will be brand new. So here we go. Um, I would circle or highlight or underline the first word um, when you write the first word down because that's the term we're defining. So for the first one, number one, an atom is the most basic particle of an element and also the smallest. So make sure that you um, circle or highlight the word atom. Your next term is an element. An element is a pure substance that can be broken down into simple substances. An example is carbon, and another example would be oxygen. Those are both elements. They're found on the periodic table of elements. We've talked about both of these elements before. As a matter of fact, you have had this definition before when we talked about uh, minerals. Our next term then is compound. A compound is a substance that is made up of two or more elements. Again, we've had the word compound before. We've talked about it when we talked about photosynthesis. Carbon plus two oxygens create CO2. Sodium plus chloride creates NaCl, or salt. Okay, So those things are separate, and when you have more than one or you combine them, and there's a reaction that makes those new compounds. All right, another term, a reactant. You know what a reactant is. We've talked about it with photosynthesis. A reactant is the substances that are combined in the chemical reaction. They're the left-hand side of the equation, okay? In photosynthesis equation, they're carbon dioxide plus water plus sunlight. Those are the reactants, okay? So I guess you'll never guess what our next term is then. A product. A product is created or made from the chemical reaction. It's the right-hand side. Oh, that's totally off the page here. Hang on. Let's see if I can get that on there. The right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so in photosynthesis, I just told you the reactants. Then the products are what? You know this. Glucose and oxygen. All right, next term, the solution. A solution, you have also had these terms. We talked about it when we were doing osmosis and diffusion. A solution is a mixture of two or more substances that are evenly dispersed throughout. So the next term is going to be a solute. And a solution is a substance that is dissolved. Oh, excuse me, that dissolves. Salute is the thing that is dissolved. No. Hold up. I think I got my words backed up. Yeah, that dissolves. That's right. Um, a salute is the in a solution is a substance that dissolves. The next word is a solvent and that does the dissolving, okay? So if we had boiling water, water would be the solvent because it would be dissolving the sugar, which is the solute that I put in there, okay? A mixture is two or more substances that are together in the same place. So if you put two things together and you mix them up, it's a mixture. Pretty straightforward. Almost done, guys. All right, so these terms are what you really need to focus on for the lab we're getting ready to do. And we're going to talk about some types of reactions that are created. Um, there's two types. And the first type is a chemical change. A chemical change is where there is a chemical reaction. A new substance is formed and energy is either given off or absorbed. So that is a chemical change. Um, some examples of a chemical change. And we have a whole PowerPoint to talk to you about 
for a chemical change, but would be um, like a cake baking, iron rusting, burning wood. I guess I could write some of those down for you. Let me see. Hold on. I'll just say examples. Burning wood. Um... And how about fireworks? Okay, so those are some examples, and we'll go into much greater detail about those um, in our classroom discussion so you can get a better grasp. Um, but those are just some examples of a chemical change or a chemical reaction. Um, our next term then is going to be a physical change. And I messed up here and wrote the word change twice, one in print and one typed. So just take that change out of there. A physical change is a process in which the substance undergoes a change in its physical properties, like the shape, the size, the color, the volume, the appearance, its state, like liquid, solid, or gas. Um, without making any changes in its chemical makeup. And some examples of that <clears throat> would be like if you have an water and we freeze it, that's an ice cube. Or if you have water and you boil it and it becomes the steam, those are all still water, okay? So they're changing their state but they are not changing what they actually are. Whereas if we talk about burning wood, you have wood, and you burn it, and then you have ash. The ash is not the same thing as the wood anymore. There's no making the ash into wood. It's, it's different, okay? So those are the two big terms that we need to focus on. And then that, things that go with those are going to be two other types of reactions. Endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs energy. Endo, think of it like on the inside. Thermic would be heat, which is energy. And endo would be on the inside. And so the other one would be an exothermic reaction. And exo, think external. Um, it's a reaction that releases energy, usually as heat. So those are your terms. Make sure you write them all down, um, and then we will talk about more of this later on, and we're going to do a lab where you guys get to determine some of the physical and chemical changes that occur.